Chair, and thank you for being here this morning or this afternoon. Thank you. How many medical professionals has APRA contacted directly to lay down the law regarding APRA's rules around authorised speech in connection with COVID-19? Thank you, Senator. I've got quite a bit of data on um, our work in the COVID space and do you... I take that on notice. All right, I'm very happy Please, to Please, but notice. could I have an answer to the um, question I just asked? How many have you contacted directly to lay down the law regarding APRA's rules around authorised speech in connection with COVID-19? Well, uh, we've, let, me, let me just set the context and try and answer the question as best I can. So, um, as of pretty much this month, we've received uh, 1,450 notifications about registered health practitioners Australia. To around, do with COVID? To do with COVID. And um, if I just give you an example of the range of issues, it's things like uh, uh, concerns being expressed by patients about the clinical care they've received when seeking or receiving COVID-19 advice, vaccination or treatment. What about just those around authorised speech? What do you mean by authorised speech? Well, I think you know what I mean. Well, perhaps if you could clarify what you mean. Under instruct Well, let's continue with the other questions. Is it necessary for APRA to receive a complaint regarding a medical professional offending your standard of speech from a third party? Or is APRA monitoring social media and taking it upon yourself to police the opinions being expressed by medical professionals? Uh, so, uh the vast majority of notifications or complaints that we receive are received from the public or other practitioners. We're not um, actively surveying social media for So the vast complaints. majority? That means some aren't that way? Well, um, I'd probably have to take on notice whether... I mean, there is a power under the national law for a board to take what's called own motion. Um, so What's own motion? Well, that means we don't need a complaint. We can, we can, the board can take an own motion and act. I'd probably have to take on notice whether we've done any own motion in relation to COVID-19. Thank you, or, or your staff. How many medical practitioners have you formally warned for wrong speak based only on their expressed opinion of COVID? Whether that be COVID itself, related health measures, including COVID injections? So, um, I'm going, to, I'm going to have to give you the figure for all registered health practitioners, so I'll have to take on notice for doctors only. We've cautioned, the boards have cautioned 108 uh, registered health practitioners for a range of issues, and I was starting to tell you the sort of things, because it's not just about what people are saying, uh, it can also be about aspects of their practice as well. Okay. Has APRA terminated the licence of a medical professional as a result of comments made publicly by that medical professional rather than on the basis of medical malpractice? So we have no power to, uh, in our terminology, cancel the registration of a practitioner. That has to go to a tribunal and that's a decision of a tribunal. Uh, however, we do have a power to suspend practitioners while we're undertaking an investigation. So there are currently 33 practitioners who are subject to what we call um, uh, immediate action. So 16 of those relate to the spread of uh, misinformation about COVID-19 or vaccination, so claims about a fake pandemic, uh, the vaccine program is government-led mind control, uh, vaccination will uh, lead to cancer. 11 of those uh, 33 relate to a failure to comply with public health orders that were in place at the time, possibly fraudulent conduct, uh, possibly around things like fake vaccination certificates and fake exemptions. Again, you know, obviously at, at a time when this was uh, the required rules. Uh, and then we have seven practitioners uh, subject to immediate action where they haven't been suspended, but there have been conditions uh, or limitations placed on their practice. So they may be conditions related to supervision uh, or there may be limitations about not, not in fact being able to issue um, vaccination uh, certificates. A number of doctors and many, many more have backed it up. A number of doctors have told me personally they are under threat from APRA and that they must comply with what the, what do you call it, government um, health advice, or the government health message. Isn't that bullying and intimidation? Well, Senator, I don't accept that that is what we're saying. Essentially, uh, the code of conduct for medical practitioners, let's just talk about medical practitioners, uh, has always said 
that um, in providing care, uh, a medical practitioner has to draw on the best available evidence and use their clinical judgment. Uh, the guidance that we provided uh, in relation to COVID-19 was simply about how those pre-existing requirements applied in the COVID context, and that was at the request of practitioners for clarification. And uh, the, I, I, I don't believe health practitioners have any reason to be fearful if they are able to demonstrate uh, how they're using evidence and how they're using their clinical judgment. And as I say, every case is looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. There's no algorithm here. So before we move to the next topic, has APRA received any direction to behave in the manner I've just indicated from any Minister for Health or a senior health bureaucrat? No. Thank you. Let's move to um, intellectual freedom. In the Ridd versus James Cook University case, the High Court of our country found that intellectual freedom plays, quote, an important ethical role, not just in the lives of the few people it protects, but in the life of the community more generally. The primacy of individual conviction relies on the right to, quote, profess what one believes to be false and, end of quote, and, quote again, the duty to speak out for what one believes to be true, end of quote, for what one believes to be true. This is the opposite of your actions. Do you know better than the High Court of Australia? Well, Senator, what I've said is that the requirement on registered health practitioners is uh, predates COVID. It is a requirement to use best available evidence and clinical judgment. I should also note there is a conscientious objection uh, element of all the codes, so that if you don't feel able, for example, to um, you know, give advice on a particular issue, there, there is a way, providing you appropriately refer your patient, that that can be dealt with. Um, so I, I don't accept that there, you know, that, so these are long-standing expectations and obligations on registered medical practitioners and indeed on all registered health practitioners. I'll quote a letter from APRA to uh, Ms Hart. It's dated the 20th of September, 2021. When providing care in person or sharing information online, registered health practitioners have a professional obligation to only share information that is evidence-based, in line with the best available health advice, and is consistent with public health campaigns such as the COVID-19 vaccination policy. If a doctor does not believe that that is good, the, the latter health campaigns, public health campaigns, is good advice or good procedure, you're forcing them to adopt it against their will or lose their job? Well, we, we, we don't employ doctors for a start, but what I'm, in terms of You are forcing job, them to lose uh, their job. S Senator Roberts, if we could allow Mr. Fletcher to finish his I, answer to you, please. I'm just gonna go back to um, what I've said. What, what we expect is that you, as the letter says, you use the best available evidence and your clinical judgment in providing your care to patients, and if we received a complaint about you or a doctor, if we received a complaint about a doctor, senator, we would we would provide that person with the opportunity to explain how they have met that requirement in the way that they have delivered care. So it's there is always procedural fairness for the practitioner to be able to put their side um, of what they believe they've done. I have circulated a letter from the Australian Medical Professional Society that is growing rapidly because of the actions of health, health bureaucrats in the last three years. AMPS, that is, it, the letter is most troubling and I'll ask your response to it. This letter has been widely circulated oh, in the profession. Me, Mr Roberts, the letter's just being circulated yeah. now, I don't so have the, the secretary Thank you. placing it to you. Senator Roberts. Have you seen that letter? Uh, I, I have seen letters from this society. I'm not sure whether I've seen this specific one. I'd have to check that. AMPS discusses the indemnity scheme for medical professionals that was promised by the Morrison government to indemnify medical professionals for injecting the COVID products for which the manufacturers were given an indemnity. The letter and attached document from the Department of mm -hmm. Health and Aged Care clearly indicates the indemnity scheme was never implemented. 
Mr Fletcher, have you allowed your members to be hung out to dry on COVID product liability? The COVID-19 vaccine scheme is not a question for APRA. It has been yeah, implemented in the shape. No, I'm not asking about the COVID. I'm that saying, is exactly the... That's the I'm history. saying the letter and attached document from the Department of Health and Aged Care clearly indicates the indemnity scheme was never implemented. Um, I want to know from Mr Fletcher, has he allowed his members or the doctors to be hung out to dry on COVID product liability? Because you're forcing the doctors to comply with it. Clarification as I don't chair. Think that's a, a question for Mr. Fletcher to answer. Okay. Uh, apologies, Senator Roberts. We'll have to come back to that. Can we, in... can we, uh, can we, review, can we give Senator review Roberts this, an indication this correspondence, of... and we'll be prepared to answer your question? So who will I ask the question to? Well, we'll, we'll let, let's have a look at it, and we'll we'll, we'll come. If back you could to provide you. some advice after the lunch we break, will, and we'll, perhaps we'll... where it is best asked, Senator Roberts. Thank you. Let's go to informed consent. From your announcement on 9th of March 2021, quoting. Mr Fletcher, there is no place for anti-vaccination message, messages in professional health practice and any promotion of anti-vaccination claims, including on social media and advertising, may be subject to regulatory action, end of quote. This is the definition now of informed consent from the High Court's decision in Rogers versus Whittaker, quote from the High Court, for consent to be legally valid, it must be given voluntarily in the absence of undue pressure or manipulation. It can only be given after the potential risks and benefits of the relevant vaccine, the risk of not having it, and any alternative options have been explained to the person. End of quote. That is settled law. ARPA is encouraging doctors to break it. Sorry, Senator Roberts, could you please direct your comments as a question to Mr Fletcher? To it seems to me that ARPA is encouraging doctors to break the, what the High Court is saying is settled law. So, Senator, I've got the March statement in front of me that was released by all national boards and APRA. Uh, and what it says is national boards expect all health practitioners to use their professional judgment and the best available evidence in practice. This includes when providing information to the public about public health issues such as COVID-19 and vaccination. And then I'll just jump a sentence to go to any promotion of anti-vaccination statements or health advice which contradicts the best available scientific evidence or seeks to actively undermine the national immunisation campaign is not supported by national boards and may be in breach of the code of conduct and subject to investigation and possible regulatory action. So there's a may in there. And as I say, if we have a concern, uh, if we receive a complaint, we look at that on a case by case basis and there is always an opportunity for that practitioner to set forth how they believe they've met the requirements of the code of conduct, because again, I want to state this, this reflects what has always been in place in relation to the expectations of the behaviour of registered doctors and other health practitioners. And the statement also makes clear if they, in the case of conscientious objection, um, for example, a practitioner's personal beliefs, uh, uh, they should inform their patient and they should create referral options for that patient. Mr Fletcher, have you or any members of your board obtained personal legal advice on this issue? Uh, no. You haven't? Okay. Uh, I'd like to just go on with the last question. Last question. Yeah, I've got... APRA have made it clear that repeating the government's talking points without question is a condition of working as a medical practitioner. Are you protecting the government and big pharmaceutical companies' interests over the interests of your members and by your brazen and in what I consider immoral actions, haven't you and others in health, are you confident in your control of the medical system? Senator, our only focus is on public protection and patient safety. And uh, as I say, our expectation, which has been there uh, uh, for many, many years, is, as I've said, around use of professional judgment and best available evidence. I suggest you talk to a few doctors. Uh 